What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to this channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Toyota Corolla, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because this very well may be the most reliable car in existence right now. Not only that, there are a couple big changes for the 2024 Corolla as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Corolla. First one being the LE and the one we are in today, starting at $21,900, which is a modest $350 bump from the 2023 model year. SE for $24,340. Nightshade, which is a new trim level for the 2024 Corolla. That one goes for $25,340. And lastly, the XSE going for $27,000 even. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Corolla is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 169 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 151 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through a continuously variable transmission, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.8 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 32 in the city, 41 on the highway. That's really good, taking regular unleaded fuel. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Corolla, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. So there will be drive modes for the Corolla if you go with the SE trim level and up. They will give you eco, normal, and sport, adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. However, if you go with our LE trim level that we have today, there's no driving modes, unfortunately. But I did want to get that out of the way. So now that we got all that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the Corolla here to the test and Let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Toyota Corolla here up to speed. All right, here we go. Pulling onto the highway in three, two, one, go. Definitely quicker than the previous Corollas I remember driving. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. Zero to 60 in less than eight seconds, that's plenty respectable. I mean, it's nothing crazy. You're not gonna wanna drag race anybody, but it is plenty fine to merge you onto the highway and things like that. So I personally have no issues with that acceleration. You could definitely tell it's a continuously variable transmission. I will say that. It definitely has a rubber band effect when you're actually in the gas. But the other thing I wanna mention, if you wanted paddle shifters, they do come on the XSE trim level only. So we don't have them today, but if you did want them, that's how you're gonna go ahead and get them. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 10.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, it comes in at 129 feet, which on paper isn't really the best. That's kind of on the higher side of things, but as far as braking feel goes, it's great. Honestly, I like the braking feel. I think I said that in my review of the Corolla last year as well. So it's not a soft braking feel. It's it's kind of a medium braking feel. It feels just right for what the Corolla is. So I personally wouldn't have any issues with the braking. I'll just put it that way. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, that's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. I will say, just having driven the Civic just a couple days ago, the 2024 Civic sedan, it is so much smoother than that. You can feel everything in the Civic. That is one of the big differences, I think, between the 2024 Civic and the 2024 Corolla. This is a much smoother ride here in the Corolla, without a doubt, 100%. Nobody's gonna argue that, but I will say, as far as steering feel goes, I like the weightierness to the Civic better. I know this isn't a comparison video, but it's fresh in my mind. It is a much looser steering feel in the Corolla, so Toyota, if you're watching, wouldn't have minded if you gave the steering feel a little more weight, maybe in the next generation, let's say, but it's not bad. It's something you get used to. It's just not as sporty as I personally would like it. As far as cabin noise goes, this is the perfect test. We're going around 58 miles per hour right now. It's not a whole lot of road noise whatsoever coming into the cabin, maybe a smidge bit of wind noise, but honestly, that has been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today as well. And touching on visibility, rear visibility at least, 100% not gonna have any issues there looking out my rear view mirror. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 
Toyota Corolla. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2024 Toyota Corolla. And so you heard me mention at the beginning of the video, there are two big changes for the 2024 Corolla. One of them being the Midnight Edition package, which of course is going to have some alterations to the exterior. And we'll touch on those as we go on. But the second big change I wanted to touch on real quick is where this one is actually built and assembled. So previously for 2022, for 2023, I know specifically, the Corolla was built and assembled in Japan. It was JDM this year. It is not. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the 2024 Corolla is now built and assembled here in the U.S., specifically Mississippi, in case you were curious. So that is the other big change. I know that's not a huge factor, but to a lot of people, it does make a difference one way or another. So I did want to mention it, but let's go ahead and start up front with the nightshade trim level and what that actually adds. So you're going to get a lot more dark badging with the nightshade trim level to start. You're going to get a black roof. You're going to get bronze wheels, which actually look pretty darn good, I will say, and also a vented rear spoiler as well so that's really the big changes for the nightshade trim level but front fascia of course is going to differ between the le and the se trim level so this le trim you're looking at right now it's going to look different than essentially all of the other trim levels available for the corolla so i first wanted to start by mentioning that the other trim levels are going to be a little more aggressive looking up front whereas this one is a little more tamed but led headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board you're going to get led daytime running lights with that as well and the automatic feature but also automatic high beams and yes that does come standard for all trim levels essential with that is is when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim that back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you so very convenient feature there my wife loves that particular feature but led accent lighting then coming with the se nightshade and xse trim levels so we don't have that with us here today but that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Corolla. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard as well. If you were to go with the SE trim level and up, they will be heated and also with LED integrated turn signals for that SE trim level and up as well. Then take a look at the side skirts. I wanted to mention this because it is slightly different depending upon the trim level that you go with. And so the LE side skirts are gonna look like what you guys are currently looking at, but you will find gray metallic side skirts for the SE and XSE trim levels and then some added black side skirts for the midnight edition so it's going to be a slightly different look depending upon the trim level that you go with surprisingly but then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with their LE and I know what you guys are thinking you're thinking those are not 16 inch steel wheels but we do have a convenience package with the LE trim level here it goes for approximately $1,400 but that does give you 16 inch alloy so wanted to mention that that is an option 18 inch alloys coming with the SE and XSC trims and then 18 inch bronze alloys coming with the nightshade. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Corolla, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. In terms of the rear spoiler, you actually have a bunch of options here. Body colored rear spoiler for the SE, a gray metallic rear spoiler for the XSE, and then a black rear spoiler for the nightshade trim level. So a little bit different there, but you also do have subscribe and like the video lettering found in the corners there. So I'm just kidding, of course, but I have been doing this for nine years. So if you're into new car reviews, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. LED tail lights do come standard for every single trim level across the board so you gotta love that for added illumination at night there is a gloss black rear diffuser for the se trim level and up otherwise you're going to get kind of this matte gray or matte black cladding whatever you want to call it then that's what you guys are looking at of course but there is a single exhaust outlet that does come standard but you will get dual chrome tips for the se trim level and up but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so we now since we are around to the back of the Corolla, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob that is one way, but there is actually a button on the trunk itself as well. I remember in the 2022 model year specifically that they didn't have that button on the trunk, so I do like that is on the 2024 model year at least, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.1 cubic feet. Of course, if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split for a good bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, of course, 
and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix the flat, which I personally love. But then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 34.8 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard for all trim levels across the board. You will find dual rear USB charging ports actually for all trim levels across the board as well. That is pretty darn cool. And unfortunately, there is no rear ventilation. So Toyota, if you're watching this, I know the Civic doesn't have any either, but both of you guys, Toyota and Honda, need to put some rear ventilation in their compact cars. But then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the LE, sport fabric for the SE and nightshade trim levels, a soft tex upholstery for the XSE, heated front seats for the XSE, and an eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the XSE. But I will say, even with our manually adjustable cloth seats, these things are pretty darn comfortable. I will say that. And Toyota and Lexus both traditionally do a very, very good job with their seat comfort. And the Corolla is certainly not an exception. It's a pretty darn good seat comfort, even without the power adjustability on this one. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. And it will be leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. And uh, 10 to 2 grips are kind of on the small side. So I wouldn't mind it if they were a bit thicker. But I don't have any issues with that. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have a kind of the new style Toyota key. You got all of your buttons on the one side. You got Toyota logo as well. And uh, ultimately though, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located directly by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, this is interesting because I don't remember this before. So analog gauges do come standard for all trim levels, but the XSE, the XSE does give you a seven inch digital gauge cluster, which I reviewed last year i loved that look they did a great job with that but with the gauge cluster for the other trim levels it's very very basic i don't think you could possibly make a more basic gauge cluster even in 2002 with the corollas they have a 3d effect to them to give them a little more pizzazz at least but with this one it's just so ridiculously basic i really don't like it so i would rather toy to either go with the 2002 corolla le look or just simply make digital gauge cluster standard on all trim levels like the volkswagen taos does even for their base trim level of that small suv so but i digress the digital gauge cluster in the middle you do have a good bit you can scroll through with that using the steering wheel mounted controls found to the left side of the steering wheel like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's trip a trip b of course outside temperature time of the day uh, the list goes on so you got pretty much everything you want up there but then make your way to overall interior quality if you want a power moonroof go with the xse and that will be optional on some of the other trim levels home light controls with the frameless rear view mirror we actually have that for up to three different garage doors and that's a 175 dollar option for any of the trim levels if you wanted that Automatic climate control does come standard for all trims, meaning you set the temperature, it's gonna automatically hit that for you. Wireless phone charger is gonna be optional for the XSE and ambient lighting is also optional for the XSE as well. But overall, I really don't mind the interior quality. It's gotten better, I will say that. Just in front of the shifter, got a little bit of storage there. Behind the shifter, you got a couple cup holders, you got electromechanical parking brake and the brake hold button, which is great when you're in stop and go traffic. And within the center armrest, it's not a ton of space in there, but you do have a 12 volt power outlet as well as another usb charging port overall i like that they changed the door handles to the same color that is surrounding the door handles because i remember in previous years they made that black and it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb so i like that you do have a usb charging port found just to the right of the storage up there as well and overall it's okay i would have liked to have seen uh, around the cup holders if they finished that with like a texturized pattern design or something like that rather than just a matte black plastic so a little bit on the basic side but it'll get the job done but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard for all trim levels across the board bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay you can check out some driving statistics up there if you wanted to along with your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there's really Really one of them that comes standard for all trim levels is going to be a six speaker sound system but there is an optional nine speaker jbl sound system that only goes for 675 dollars which isn't that bad because a lot of optional sound systems typically range from 2000 to 4000 so 675 that might be worth it but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and Let's test out our six speaker sound system that we have with us here today. All right, I gotta be honest, you guys, that is one of the better six speaker sound systems that I have heard in quite a while. Like that was a pretty darn good bass, plenty of clarity as well. Like I'm surprised 
that is only a six speaker sound system. That sounds more like an eight, if I'm being honest. So well done Toyota, whatever you guys did there with that sound system, that is pretty darn good. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Corolla in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start with the best part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Yes, that's for all trim levels. And yes, that is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So it pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, but also a driver's knee airbag, also a rear passenger seat cushion airbag, and also a rear seat mounted side impact airbags. That last one is usually like a several hundred dollar option in luxury vehicles. So the fact that that comes standard on a Corolla, that's pretty darn good. But anyways, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. So that will give you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, proactive driving assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, and dynamic radar cruise control. Then if you were to go with the XSC trim, you're also going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert that we actually also have today because of that convenience package in case you were curious. But Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Corolla, you have excellent safety. You can't beat an IHS Top Safety Pick Plus. You have legendary reliability. Just take a look at the Consumer Reports magazine. That will verify that. Great MPGs, 41 miles per gallon on the highway. That is pretty darn good. And uh, ride quality is actually pretty darn good for a compact car as well. I want to say that on the plus side here because it's probably the best ride in terms of compact cars that exist out there today. So if you value a smoother ride quality, maybe consider the Corolla because this one has got it. Uh, as far as room for improvement goes, I got two things here, no rear ventilation. And yes, I said that with the Civic as well. I would love rear ventilation, especially if you have kids, you want them to be comfortable. And the other thing is these gauges are just so dang boring. If they went back to the 2002 look or a digital gauge cluster, that would definitely work for me. But let me know what you guys think of the Corolla in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.